How you doing guys? Today I just wanted to show you a project that I've wanted to do to a tractor for a number of years. Now, maybe not to this particular tractor I wanted to do this to, but I just, my curiosity got the better of me and I've started this project. So what I want to do is try to recreate like a 60s custom panel, paint panel on the hood in the tops of the fenders of my 1056. And what I mean by that is this, back in the 60s and then probably the 70s, you know, the low riders, gassers, custom cars, they all had like a turned, um, you know, turned gold leaf uh, panels in, in their paint schemes. I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, basically, I wanna kind of recreate a cool looking panel, paint panel on this tractor hood and you know, if it works out, you'll see this video. And if you don't see the video, it didn't really work out that well. Um, I did try a couple of test panels on some other old parts that I had, and it came out fairly okay. Now, this is going to be another one of those controversial kind of projects, kind of like the battery box that I made uh, for this tractor. Um, I've caught some heat about it. People have said it looks stupid. That's fine. Whatever. I, I, I'm not too concerned whether or not people find it cool or not. I just like to try to challenge myself to see if I can do a certain project. So we'll see if this works out. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna to put together these manila folders, tape them together. I'm gonna to lay them out onto the hood, figure out my basic shape that I want um, for it. And then I will start to outline the, the panel. I'll show you how I do it in just one second. I'm just gonna kind of do a basic layout of how I want the panel to look. Just before I uh, get going here, just some of the things that I'm going to use for this project is a roll of 1 8 inch masking tape, a half inch, this is a 2 inch or 1 inch and a half, whatever, some good quality automotive masking tape, some good quality um, masking paper, a pair of scissors, and then what else do we have down here in the box? Uh, oh, a knife, a protractor, just to, to come up with the angles that I want. But essentially, and a pencil. So that's what I'm going to start off with. And that's base, and then some paints. And I'll get to the paints when, uh, when I get to that point of it. Okay, so I have taken my manila folders and basically measured off a half inch from the center of the slot as well as a half inch off the center of the hood ornament. And that's where I'm gonna have one of the outer lines of the panel. I try to keep this line as straight as I possibly can. That way I know that that's where my edge is gonna start and the panel is gonna come off to this direction because I am gonna keep a strip of the original paint down the center as well as Basically, the, the panel will come down, curve across, and come back across. So that way there's original paint all the way around it. And I'll outline border it with black paint. Um, so that's where I'm starting from. And that's where I'm going to be start to design the, the feel of the panel. Um, and ultimately start to primer it. Uh, what else did I want to say? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just in the thinking stages here of how I want it to look. So, but initially that's, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to actually design the panel. Oh, and then once I design the panel on this side, all I have to do is take the template and flip it over and I'll be all set for the other side. And they would, they should theoretically match. So this is the basic design of the panel that I want to paint. Um, I just used my compass and traced you know, the pointy part right along the edge of the hood all the way down. That way I could come up with a fairly uniform line down the panel. Next, I just used this washer to make some rough rounded edges on the panel. So that way it look cleaner, kind of like an old Chevelle, you know, you know SS Chevelle racing stripe. And I'm just going to use this one here and then I'll just take it and flip it right over onto the other side to make the next panel. In order to kind of make my paint line, I'm going to basically trace this pattern with this 
fine line tape and it does do the curves it will this tape will make the curves quite smooth and nice I don't have to like piecemeal it because it kind of stretches and you know just kind of stretches and stretches the outer edge and shrinks the inner edge that way it'll come around um, I'll probably do the starting and the ending of the tape on this panel towards the back of the hood so that way I'll have nice straight uh, uniform uh, edges as well as across the front itself because I've done this before meaning I've done these kind of tape lines before and no matter where the two ends come together there's always a little bip right there so I'm going to put the bips in the back um, that way they're not quite as noticeable before I do anything though I do have a small dent in the hood right here I'm just going to scuff that put a little spot putty in there because that's going to be inside the panel when I paint so I'm just going to put that right there just to fill in that dent just a little bit so it's not quite as noticeable. I'm not going to go crazy and block sand the whole hood or any of that crap. Um, just going to fix that little bit dent so that way when I paint the panel uh, on the on the hood, you won't see a little whoop de doo in the shiny new paint. With a little bit of masking tape, I just masked around the dent a little bit. And there's a couple of deep scratches right here, so I just taped around them and just lightly, lightly, lightly put some uh, spot putty in there. I'll let it dry overnight tonight, and then tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, I'll just lightly sand that down to get all that nice and smooth. Um, the dent should be pretty... Oh, let's try to get that thing to focus for us. I guess not, but that dent should... Oh, there it goes. That dent should be pretty much gone. I mean, if there's a little little wobble, it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm not filling in any of the spot weld marks from the factory for spot weld marks in the front, but I just want to, just so when I lay the, well, I'm not going to say the color yet, but once I lay that color down, I just don't want to see a big whoop de doo in there. And this should just, just, just very, very little. Take it out so that way it all blends and you're never going to see it. Now that I uh, sanded these areas down real lightly with some 600 grit, I actually hit the spot putty with some 220 and then I did it with 600 real quick just to knock it flat. I also did the uh, gouges right there. Now I'm going to lay out the pattern and basically what I did was, because my protractor is clear, I uh, basically lined this up, the center of the protractor right there with the center of the, uh, I just eyeballed it with the center of the slot. I measured over a half an inch, I made a mark, and I did the same thing but using the hood ornament, made a mark, and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to line those marks up, or line up the pattern with those marks, where the hell is it, there it is, and that's roughly how I'm going to center the pattern on the hood. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement at this end, from the edge to the bottom of the pattern, and take a rough measurement from the edge to the top of the pattern. That way I can center it this direction. Once I do that, I'm going to tape, loosely tape the, paint, the pattern down. So that way I can go, I can outline it with my fine line tape and then pull the paper pattern off. So basically I'll have just the outline of the fine line tape of the pattern. And that is where I'm going to start the masking of the, of this particular side. I'll flip the pattern over, repeat the exact same uh, procedure, and then tape around it, and then I can start to uh, mask this off because I am going to spray a light coat of etching. Oh, I'll sand the whole top areas inside the patterns with 600 grit, and then I'll hit it with a light coat of etching primer, let that flash, and then I got some aluminum paint, which is going to be the base coat of the color. And I'll spray that on, let that dry. We'll pull the we'll, and we'll pull the uh, the patterns off, or pull the the masking off, and you can see the two uh, basic stripes or the beginning of the basic stripes. So I have the pattern flipped over and on the opposing side of my original layout. And as you can see, I have the fine line tape that I used. I just you know went right along the edge of the pattern all the way across to create the outline so that way I can paint the center or the inside of that and leave some of the original hood color all the way around. Now there, now this hood's been painted by somebody else years and years ago uh, so I'm not really worried about 
painting over original paint. It's not the, it's not the case. So let me get this other uh, pattern uh, outlined in, in the fine line tape, and then I'll show you what the next uh, part is. Okay, so everything is taped off, wiped down. Now I'm going to just quickly hit it with some etching primer just to help the, uh, the silver base coat that I am going to use to stick a little better or adhere. So, but I'm going to go around and make sure all the tape is set real good and tight onto the, onto the hoods. So that way I'm not going to be fighting any overspray or leakage. And uh, then we're going to move on to the next step. So it's etched, primed, and the base coat of aluminum has been sprayed onto the hood. And there's, there's imperfections, but that's fine. This is just the base coat. This is just the start of the process. Or I should say, it's about halfway of what I'm going to do. And you'll see that in shortly. But even though there might be a little bit of a reaction kind of happening here, it doesn't matter. And you can see where the dent was. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Um, after I get done with it, you won't even notice any of that. Plus, I'm under fluorescent lights. And if you know, fluorescent lights are murder on paint jobs. And I'm using rattle cans. So let's just keep this all in perspective. All right. Next thing is to pull all this tape off and let this uh, paint dry. With a little dry time and removing of the uh, masking, you can kind of see now the panels that I've painted onto the hood. Now, one panel is a little bit more forward than the other one. This one's just a hair this way. Um, it must have been the way I taped it because when I go to the back, the back is pretty much dead nuts right on. So and this is where I measured it from. I measured it from the back and then I laid them out. And, but I think it, yeah, the one on the far side is just a hair in. I must have taped it in just a hair on the uh, template. But, oh well, it doesn't matter. We keep on moving. All right, I got to let this dry and we will be back in a little while to do the next step. With the panels uh, dry and retaped off, and I taped them off, not crazy, but just basically the outline. I didn't use my super fine line tape to outline them on the basis that I need, I need to use some of it for the last part of this project. So, but in order to give this silver or the aluminum color a nice mottled look, I don't know if you've ever played with this stuff, but I... I've had pretty good luck fooling around with Hammerite paint by Rust-Oleum, and this one happens to be silver. And the reason why I based this with an aluminum color is because I'm going to model this paint in such a way that the base will bleed through. And it kind of gives you this weirdo, uh, you know, almost turned look to it. It's actually pretty cool. I've played with it before. Uh, the big thing to do though is you got to make sure it's mixed really really well and you got to move fast because I am going to use a brush and the reason why I'm going to use the brush is I'm going to apply it, let it flash and then hit it with the brush real quick. Drag the brush all over it and that's really going to create a lot of activity in the aluminum color. Um, sounds weird. It will be weird um, but it actually looks pretty cool. Now, this is a big gamble. We'll see if this works the way I'm anticipating. I've done this before in smaller, like real tiny areas, and it's worked. This is the biggest area that I've ever done it on. So I'm hoping my technique will, uh, will work. Let's see.
So with a little bit of dry time, I just pulled all the tape off. And I did make a few mess ups with the tape. I should have waited. I should have let it dry a little longer. But as you can see, the Hammerite gives you a nice mottled look. Now the, the lighting that we're under here is fluorescent, so it's murder. So every imperfection is being shown to you. But I think it does give a good kind of look of what I was going for. I did mess it up. One thing about the Hammerite is you really can't touch it up. Um, once it starts to set, that's it. You're committed. And touch-ups become really kind of a pain in the back end. So when I was pulling off the tape, I accidentally touched the Hammerite right there. Right where that little dot is. So I just took a little bit of Hammerite on a toothpick. I dropped it and then it just all melted into itself now you know from this distance you can't see it so but you know i made a little mess up right there the other place i made a mess up is right here you can see there's like this weirdo i actually touched my finger onto it so i had to get the brush and just barely touch it but it made a little weird kind of oh, my phone is uh, there it is phone camera is not gonna really focus there for a second and then the other thing is i didn't know that know this but let's see if we can get this thing there it is you see that little whoop de doo right there <laughs> there was actually a hair <laughs> it's actually a hair in the paint when i pulled the tape off it pulled the hair out <laughs> but hey what are you gonna do right okay so now this needs to fully dry uh, so we're gonna let it sit for at least 24 hours maybe a little bit longer and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pinstripe paint a black outline all the way around the panels. So that way it just gives a nice definition look. Now I could leave it just like this, but I want a little black line kind of like to mimic the rat poison on the side. So we're going to do that. And then when everything dries nice and hard, probably over a course of a week, then I'll wet sand it with some 2000 grit. And that'll smooth it right out. Um, it won't be like glass, but it'll be smoothed out for the most part. And it, it should look pretty good. It should look pretty good. So I'm pretty, stight, uh, pretty stoked about it. Stight. <laughs> but anyways, I'm tired. I've been working on this thing a lot lately. So let me let, well, let's let let this dry, and then we'll get back with the pinstriping. With the outline taping complete, in other words... Each panel has been outlined um, with this basically fine line tape, if you want to call it. Because I'm going to paint a black line, hand paint a black line, pinstripe line, all the way around each panel. So each panel will be have the serial silver with a black line pinstripe around it. Uh, on the front here, you'll see that I pushed these... Um, or I push the pinstripe onto the panel itself. And that is to correct the error that I made that this panel is just a little bit forward compared to this panel. So that should even it out. I'll just paint over the top of the silver. And then when I get to that point of wet sanding it, I'll just need to be real careful right here not to really bear down on the black paint to basically sand it off back to the silver. Because um, I really don't want to touch this up. But as you can see, it's pretty even all the way across. I didn't make a correction in the back because the steering wheel's there and you're really not going to see it. Your eye's really going to see that right there. So I wanted to make sure I get that fixed as close as possible. I'm going to finish taping this all off. I'm just going to run some blue tape, mask tape around the edges just to make sure I don't get no black uh, dripped on it. And then I will show you what it looks like. I think I'll, if I, if I remember, I'll have a little touch of it with the uh, black paint around. So all the uh, black has been hand painted on. I'm going to let this sit for about another half hour or so. I put two coats of black paint, I should say, uh, on there just to make sure it's good and covered. Um, I'll just let that sit for about another half hour or so and then I'll start pulling the tape off. I don't want to leave the tape on the silver overnight only because it is fairly fresh and I just don't want anything to bite into it. So 
All right, let's get this tape off. Let's get it outside and start wet sanding it. And there they are. Obviously this is in rough form. In other words, I haven't wet sanded this down yet. But they came out pretty darn good. I'm real happy with the way they laid. Um, I'm going to do the center, the silver, uh, with 600 grit to get it fairly flat. I'll get it to about 90-95% flat. I'm not going to go all the way on the basis that it is brush paint. So let's be honest. Some areas are thicker than others and, and I don't want to really blow through. I'm going to stay away from the black pinstripe line for now. Um, try to stay away from that completely. When I go to like 1500 to take out the 600 sand scratches, that's at, at, it'll be at that point that I'll start to touch the black line a little bit just to get the tape uh, line down a little bit. Uh, then I'll hit it with like a 3000 foam pad 3000 grit foam pad to smooth it all out. I'll do the black line at that point in time. I'm not looking for it to be absolutely perfect. I want it to be a little bit, you know, a little bit blown through. I don't want, I, I want it to look aged. Essentially, that's the goal. So that way it's not pitcher, pitcher perfect. I want it to look a little bit aged so it matches the patina of the tractor. That's how I did the rat poison on the side of the tractor. You can see it's not perfect all the way. There's some like, like, you know, like the black line's a little bit sanded away and the red outline kind of shows a little bit more and then vice versa. So that way when you stand back and you take a look at it, it actually looks the part like it's been painted there for a number of years. And that's the look that we want the stripe, or at least I want the stripes to be. So let's get to sanding and some polishings, buffing, and um, either I'll have a, the next shot will be it you know, here done, or I'll have it on the tractor so we can take a look at the finished product. With one of the stripes wet sand and buffed, I'm going to show you exactly how it's kind of coming out. To be brutally honest with you, there's a few things I'm not happy about, but overall, I'm very happy with the way this is coming out. Uh, number one, I probably should have done some more body work on the top of the hood in order to make it flat or flatter if there's a way to say that better. And the reason why is this, because I don't know if you can notice, but right here in the stripe, there's like a little dip. That dip is because there's a dip in the hood. This is right where the hood hinge pressure kind of goes. So it kind of dips the hood down like this. Um, probably should have, probably should have fixed that. This is where the dent is also that I filled. And as you can see, it's a low spot with a high around it. So a little bit of a high spot right here. It was just starting to touch through to the rust that the original rust on the hood. Everything else looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a high spot right here, kind of burnt through, and then there's this huge high spot right there, which is actually a ding up. I probably should have tapped it down, but what are you going to do? There's really not much, not much you can do. It's nice. It's flat. It's smooth. Um, I'm real happy with it. It should look really nice on the tractor. I brought it outside to the sunlight for two reasons. One, you can take a look at what it looks like in the sunlight. And two, the fluorescent lights are murder uh, when you paint things. So it, it just accentuates everything like 10 times. But from like this distance, or if we just turn around to this distance like that, I think it looks pretty darn good. It came out pretty darn nice. Obviously, that spot sucks, but hey, again, what are you going to do? Um, it's really, I really don't have an option to fix it because I think that would just make it look even worse. So I'm just going to leave it alone. The stripe closest to us right now needs to be sanded and buffed. And then we can, I can install these tins back on the tractor and we can take a look at it, what it looks like all finished up. Both stripes are now wet sand and buffed. It actually looks really good. Or at least I really like it. Uh, hopefully you like it. Um, but there is one thing. I am going to an attempt a repair of this blow through. That is just not acceptable. So what I've done is I've wiped down with wax and grease remover. Got 
all the wax and the buffing compound out of this area theoretically I am going to take some of that hammer paint and with a small brush I'm just going to add a little paint right here I'm going to let it dry for a day or so and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scuff it with a 3000 grit uh, foam pad or soft pad just to blend it and then buff it with some uh, with some compound and I'm hoping that'll just melt it away enough so it'll cover that spot up. So let me get to work and let's pray. With a little bit of the hammered paint and a small brush, an artisan brush. And actually, I got this artisan brush at Home Depot, so it's not even a high quality brush. I just went ahead and dabbled a little bit of paint over the dark spot. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of a blemish look right there. But I'll give it some time to dry, probably 24 hours, and then I'll hit it with 3,000 foam pad, 3,000 grit foam pad, really lightly, and then I'll hit it with some compound, and that should make it all blend away, hopefully. At least that's the, uh, that's the goal. All right, next, we'll put this hood back on the tractor and see what it looks like all together. And with the hood on... I'm able to call this project complete. It actually came out pretty good. I'm real happy with the results. A couple things could have come out a little bit better, but overall I think it really gives the tractor the look that I was looking for, which is a little bit more of like a race tractor. Um, if we take a closer look at it, the stripes came out real good. I'm real happy with them. And then with that hammer style paint, they got a real nice kind of texture to them you know, not texture feel, they're, they're flat. I, I wet sanded them down and they're all flat and smooth. You see the reflection of the steering wheel in the hood. Uh, let me get, yeah, right there, you can see. But overall, I'm real happy with the way it came out. I'm real happy with the way it looks. I did the tops of the fenders too, as you could tell, just to kind of keep it all together, I guess. I don't know, just kind of, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. I think it looks really good. I really like this tractor. It really came out good. It runs good. And we're on to the next project. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Please uh, leave a comment also. Uh, I always like to see what the comments are. I try to respond to everybody. Um, sometimes I don't. I apologize. But I try to respond to everybody. Please subscribe if you like these kinds of uh, videos of just kind of like little makeshift projects. Small engine repair, transmissions, and wheel horse tractors. Very much appreciate that. Also, click the little bell icon so you'll get notified when I put up a new video. As always, guys, thank you very much and have a great day.